Welcome to the Dog and Balls Network. My name's Boogie Bentley. I know a lot of times some of us like to say that we are disrespected. Tennessee is always disrespected by ESPN, by CBS, by the SEC Network, by the national media. And maybe some cases that's true, but maybe sometimes we got to look back and realize where this football program has been prior to Josh Heupel, Lane Kiffin leaving in the middle of the night, Derek Dooley, Butch Jones, uh, Jeremy Pruitt. I don't think this football team has been as good as maybe we thought, but Josh Heupel is changing that. Josh Heupel is fixing that. Been kind of bouncing around the internet looking at some predictions. Vegas just dropped some betting lines. I also saw this. Uh, SEC Unfiltered put out a video. 2024 best case and worst case scenarios for Tennessee football. What do you guys think? Best case scenario, 10 and 2. I may disagree a little bit with that. Worst case, the floor for Tennessee is 8 and 4. I think that's pretty spot on. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to take a listen to what SEC Unfiltered had to say, but as always, I need you guys to do that YouTube stuff for me. Hit the thumbs up just below the video. It's quick, free, easy, and it helps the channel. Also, if you are new to the Talking Balls Network, welcome. Uh, We're not experts here. We're not insiders. We're not media. We're not reporters. We're not journalists. We don't break news we talk about the news this channel is for the fans by the fans if you like what we do make sure you subscribe click that bell for notifications you're not going to miss out when we go live or when we drop a video going to be live tomorrow night friday night 7 p.m eastern time for a watch party tennessee versus vanderbilt on the diamond we're going to watch the baseball team number one ranked team in the country Go out and play on Friday night. It's like hanging out with your boys, watching the game, talking. We'll chat up some Tennessee football. We'll talk about recruiting, transfer portal. We'll have a good time tomorrow night, but make sure you tune in for that. So let's go over and take a listen. Uh, This is the SEC Unfiltered podcast on YouTube, and I think this guy was pretty spot on with what he had to say. Again, he had the ceiling at 10-2. and He kind of rattled off some of the automatic wins, UTC, Kent State, UTEP, Vanderbilt. Uh, The most intriguing games, he said on this schedule, Oklahoma on the road, and then Alabama in Neyland Stadium. He talked about some of the other games there as well. Uh, But let's listen to what he had to say about the floor, because I thought these were very interesting points about the floor for Tennessee in 2024. Like, I think last year, guys, I think why last year was so big. I think Tennessee, under Josh Heupel, set the minimum expectation. I think set the floor for the program, if you will, going eight and four, winning eight games in that regular season, right? I I think they did because I think you – Last season was so – it felt like cruise control, right? That's what we kept saying all year long. This feels like we're in cruise control just trying to get to 2024, trying to get to the Nico era, trying to be loyal to Joe, but go out and win as many football games as possible. But it didn't feel like 2022, and it didn't feel the way this this football team feels going into 2024. But is that the new floor? Do you agree with what the SEC – a uh, podcast unfiltered is saying here that the new floor for Tennessee is eight and four. It doesn't feel like, you know, the Butch Jones years, the Jeremy Pruitt years, the Derek Dooley years when we were fighting just to get bowl eligible. It was a win to get bowl eligible. Now it's an expectation, an unspoken expectation. We don't even talk about getting bowl eligible. That That is so below the floors. But getting bowl eligible is beneath the floor for this program in 2024. Let's hear a little bit more. You look at what Tennessee football was before Josh Heupel. For over a decade, they were in the woods. They were lost in the forest, right? They were abysmal for Tennessee standards, right? I mean, they just were, right? A 500 program. I think Josh Heupel has gotten this program back to a point from a talent standpoint, from an expectation standpoint, where eight and four is the absolute minimum expectation. Guys, I think you look at this schedule. I mean, in a worst case scenario, I guess you lose to Georgia, you lose to Bama, you lose to Oklahoma. We're almost reaching for that fourth loss, right? We're reaching for the fourth loss. Is it Kentucky at home? Is it Florida at home? Do you get upset by Mississippi State at home? Is it NC State at a neutral site who, you know, I don't know if NC State's ready to beat a Tennessee. So I'm setting the worst case scenario at eight and four. What do you guys think? What's your best case scenario? What's your worst case scenario? You know, I've talked a whole lot about that game on September the 21st. Tennessee going on the road to play Oklahoma. I think so much hangs in the balance for that game. Josh Heupel's got something to prove. Returning back to Oklahoma, the bitterness there, the angriness there. He wants to go prove a point on September the 21st. But when I look at the rest of the schedule, I agree. I agree with what he's saying over there at SEC Unfiltered. I think 8-4 and is the floor, but I think 
like the ceiling for me. And I know, look, Tennessee can go out and they can, they can run the table. Tennessee can beat every single team on this schedule. Will they beat Georgia? If I had to bet my life savings on Tennessee beating Georgia on the road, I'm not going to do it. I'm taking Georgia in that game. So I'm going to be realistic. I'm going to set the ceiling at 11-1. and one. I'm going to set the floor at 8-4. and four. What do you guys think? I also want to roll over and take a look at something else here. I want to go look. CBS put out their SEC post-spring power rankings. I want to pull it up, and I want to take a look at it to make a point uh, about the schedule as we look ahead to 2024. This is, again, CBS Sports SEC post-spring power rankings. Georgia fends off Texas for number one spot. Alabama lands outside top three. Now, I know there's a ton of buzz around Texas right now, and rightfully so, right? They're coming off of a college football playoff appearance. I get it. I don't necessarily buy into the Texas hype, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. When I Locked on Vols last week. One of the questions that Kaner asked me, he said, let's break down, let's rank the SEC coaches from 1 through 16. And Steve Sarkeesian is a guy that everybody has right up there at the top. They've got Steve Sarkeesian right up there, chomping at the bit, right on the heels of Kirby Smart. I don't see it. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't think he was very good at Washington. I don't think he was very good at USC. Yes, he went to the Saban rehab program, had one good year at Texas last year, a college football playoff appearance. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's take a look at the SEC post-spring power rankings. Uh, it should come as absolutely no surprise. Georgia right up there at the top, and, and that's where they deserve to be. I think Georgia, honestly, I think they were one of the best teams in the country last year. Lost one football game, right? I think they deserve to be in the college football playoff. That's a, a conversation and an argument for another day. You, we can disagree. We can agree. Are you taking the best teams in college football, or are you taking the most deserving? Because you drop the ball either way when you look back at the 2023 college football playoff. Texas comes in at number two. And, and again, for me, look, you're stepping up to the big leagues. Texas is moving to the SEC. Will they, will they have that same success? You go back and look at their schedule last year. Some of the cupcake teams they beat – Rice, Wyoming, you went on the road and beat Baylor, Kansas, Houston, BYU. That's not exactly a, a very strong schedule. You did have a win over Alabama earlier in the year. Uh, you lost to Oklahoma. 34 to 30. Uh, let's see, who else did you beat? You, uh, you obviously lost to Washington in the college football playoff, but that schedule was not a gauntlet. It wasn't a murderer's row. Let's see what they look like in 2024 in the SEC. They've got to play Oklahoma again. Now you've got Georgia on the schedule. The Gators at Arkansas, Kentucky at Texas A&M. How much more difficult is that schedule? We'll see how Texas holds up. And this could be one of those takes where, uh, well, Boogie, you really had no idea what you were talking about. I just want to see Texas prove it. I want to see them proven in the SEC, and they're going to have an opportunity to do that in 2024. Ole Miss comes in at number three. Alabama at number four, and, and that's an interesting one, too, obviously, with Nick Saban retiring. How good is Kalen DeBoer? That's something else that me and Kaner talked about on Locked on Vols last week is how good is Kalen DeBoer? All he's done is win. He's won everywhere he's been. He's got a career record of 104 and 12, but again, he hasn't done it in the SEC. I, I, we'll see how Alabama does. Missouri comes in at number five, Tennessee at number six. And the thing, I, you know, you look at these SEC rankings from CBS.com and you look in front, you look in front of Tennessee. They come in at sixth. They don't play Missouri. They don't play Ole Miss. They don't play Texas. So two teams in these power rankings that they actually play, they go on the road to play Georgia, and then they play Alabama at home. Now, some early betting lines came out. Uh, I think it was yesterday they, they hit social media. Tennessee opened up as a five-and-a-half-point favorite against NC State. And I know that's a game uh, that Coach Jay has circled on his calendar. He was a little concerned. He was a little concerned about that NC State game. Is Boogie overlooking that game in Charlotte? I like Tennessee. I thought, you know, when we talked about that, I said I felt like Tennessee would probably be favored by a touchdown, maybe maybe two scores, maybe 10 points. They come in as a five-and-a-half-point favorite against NC State. They also opened as a five-point underdog. On the road, September the 21st against Oklahoma. That one kind of surprised me. I thought that would be a little tighter. I'm not surprised that Oklahoma's the favorite there. Again, you're going on the road, hostile environment. They're going to be welcoming Josh Heupel back to Oklahoma. I think he's going to have something to prove in that game. That's the one that I've continued to harp on when we're looking at preseason predictions is that game September the 21st. I think that's the difference in maybe a 9-3 and three season versus a 10-2 and two in a college football playoff appearance. 
I think Tennessee, I like the way they shape up against Alabama. It's at home. I think that is a key in that game. Uh, they also opened as an 11-point favorite over the Gators. Georgia, 17 and a half point favorite over Tennessee on the road November the 16th. What do you think about that one? Uh, but what do you guys think? Again, a lot to unpack there. Just a lot of preseason predictions and power rankings and odds coming out. I, I think I'm I'm going ten and two. I told you guys I was between nine wins and and ten wins. In you know going into the spring, I think spring kind of put me at that ten win mark. Way too early predictions, betting lines, win totals. Uh, is Tennessee being disrespected or are they starting to get that respect? that they deserve jump in the comment section let's talk about it as always smash that thumbs up on the way out the door uh, you guys know where you can grab your talking balls merchandise you can go to bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls also shout out to you members of the channel if you don't have a power t beside your name you like the content the live streams the videos whatever it is you like about this channel think about hitting that join button over beside subscribe you can do that for as little as a dollar a month you get custom talking balls emojis access to fan call-in shows all kinds of fun perks and benefits but that is going to do it for this one this this is Hawking Falls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.